Hey, welcome back. I'm starting a new series of videos on colliders. This is going to be part one, which is what a collider is, how to make one, and also two very important checkboxes on colliders, which are the character collider checkbox and the ignore raycast checkbox. Part two will be uh, events and uh, logics involving colliders, and we'll uh, move on from there and see if we need any more parts. There are a bunch of videos I've done previously that involve colliders, so I'll link those in the video description so you can take a look at those too. But let's get started with what a collider is. So I'm in um, a world here that I've created with lots of learning materials. Most of them are only applicable to part two, but uh, one of them will be applicable in a few moments, uh, a few minutes maybe. But let's start by creating a collider. So how do we do that? So I'm going to go ahead here and quit my uh, developer tooltip here, and I'm going to open up the context menu and go to create new 3D model box. When this is created, you'll see that we've got a box in the world and that I can grab and move it around. You'll see here that the laser is aiming at the box and stopping. And that's an example of a collider-based interaction. You'll also see that I'm standing on the floor here, and if I jump, I'll fall back down and land on the floor. That's another collider-based interaction happening. So what is a collider? A collider is a component which is added to objects to enable them to respond to collision-based events or detections. So with the laser, it's a sort of raycast looking for the box, which is basically a laser coming out of the tip and it will detect anything that it hits on. A bit like a laser in, real world, in the real world, where you do sort of laser range finding to sort of measure distances and stuff like that. The box is also an example of um, different types of colliders. So this is a box collider, which is added to the box. And you'll see that the box has an outline. This outline isn't really a collider, but it represents what the collider looks like anyway, so it's kind of handy. You'll see that uh, it's representing a volume, which encompasses the whole box. So, uh, you know, the width and height and depth of the box forms a collider volume, and that's what can be interacted with. Let's take a look at this collider in the inspector so you can see what I mean a little bit more. So I'm going to aim with my laser at the box and hit secondary and then open the inspector on it. And about most of the way down, you'll see that there is the box collider component, which I mentioned. You'll see here that the box collider has a size of 111, and that matches the size of the box mesh. I'll link in the video description a video on how to create a box manually from scratch, which should help you understand how these components interact with each other. But what you'll see here on the box collider is that it's representing a volume for the collider here. So if I were to uh, just change a few things here by removing that component, I can now change the size of the box collider here. So if I made the box collider a little bit smaller in the X dimension, you'll see now that I have to aim at the middle of the box or it won't go through. And that's because I've changed that volume to make it smaller. So that's what a collider is. It's basically a volume of mathematics that lets you interact with another object. Let's create another type of collider next to this one, so you can see that there are multiple types. So here I'm going to go to Create New 3D Model Sphere. Now here you'll see a sphere in the world, and again I can grab it, and that's because there's a sphere collider on it. Let's inspect that in the video, uh, in the video description. No, we're going to inspect it and see what that looks like in the inspector. So I'm going to aim my laser at it, hit secondary, and then go to Open Inspector. At the bottom here, you'll see Sphere Collider, which is a different type of collider. Now this one has a radius, not a uh, dimension, that's because sphere colliders are specified in uh, a radius. And this basically means how big is the um, radius of the sphere's uh, collision volume from the center, which is where the sphere is located. So you'll see here there's a gizmo with uh, the translation gizmo turned on, and that's uh, the center of the sphere. And then the edge of the sphere represented in a mesh here um, is where the edge is, and that's the same for the collider volume here. It's 0.5 in radius. Many of the create new options have colliders on them, so we can do just one more very quickly, cylinder, and then if we inspect this and open it in the inspector, you'll see here cylinder collider. Now a cylinder collider has a radius and a height, so you should start be able to, uh, being able to see that different colliders have different properties, that, but they all define basically a mathematical volume of how big a collider is. Let's move on now to um, some of the properties about a collider that you can control. We're going to focus on just sort of the world building ones that you're um, going to look at first of all. And then, as I said, in part two, we'll cover the uh, physics and collider based events that you can do with colliders. So over here, I have an example of the uh, checkboxes that I was mentioning at the start of the video, and these show you how to interact on a basic sort of world building level with colliders. So we're going to be focusing on the um, two checkboxes here, Character Collider and Ignore Raycasts. So this is a default uh, box which has been created exactly as I created it one over there, but just 
change a little bit in terms of size. You'll see here I can aim my laser at it, it stops, but I can also walk through it. The first checkbox here that says Character Collider prevents you from being able to walk through it. Essentially it makes you collide with it. So if you've ever walked into a door, a fridge, or stepped on a piece of Lego, that's technically a Character Collider. So here if I walk into this box, you'll see I can't go through it. The next checkbox here is Ignore Raycasts. This will prevent raycasts from occurring. Again, a raycast is basically a laser that comes out from a point to try and find something in the world. So when I aim the laser at the box here, there is a laser coming out of the, um, the tooltip and it's trying to find something in front of it and it finds the box because the box does not ignore raycasts, but this one does. So you can see that it's still there, it's still being rendered, but when I aim my laser at it, the laser actually goes through and off into the distance. And that's because Ignore Raycast is enabled. Those are controlled by these two checkboxes here. If you have a lot of objects within the world that you want to turn on Character Collider with, you can actually use a tooltip for this. I'm going to show you where that tooltip is located and then uh, how it works. So if you open up the inventory and you go to Inventory, Essential Tools, you'll find in Essential Tools this sort of green colored tip that's bright at the, uh, at the tip. When you select it here, you'll see Character Collider Setter Tip in the top uh, left. You can then double priming this to spawn it in the world and then equip it as normal. When equipped, you can aim at any object which has a collider that you can raycast. So in this case, the box is being stopped by the, the laser is being stopped by the box and you can hit primary and now you can't walk through it and you can hit secondary and now you'll be able to walk through it. If I do that again, whilst looking at this uh, checkbox here, you'll see that when I primary it, it turns on the checkbox and when I secondary it, it turns off the checkbox. So that is the character collider checkbox and the ignore raycast checkbox enabled. I hope that gives you an explanation of what colliders are and uh, where you can find them in the world. Uh, I know that might have been basic, but it's always good to cover the basics. In part two, we'll be talking about more advanced topics such as the uh, physics events and uh, handling colliders and logics. Right, let's uh, get going and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.